When something small breaks, everyone just says, super glue it. That's always the fix, super glue. People rely on these tiny little tubes of adhesive to fix all sorts of things. And super glue is good, but it has its limitations. It comes in tiny amounts, it's runny, it sometimes won't work with certain surfaces. But for larger, broader applications where you need a lot of strength, there's something even better out there. And from my experience, most people have never even heard of it. So today, I'm gonna to talk about a whole world of adhesives that you can use to bond everything from wood and metal to plastic and concrete. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So these super adhesives that I find so helpful all fall into one big category, epoxy. Epoxy adhesives are two-part adhesives that become active when you mix the parts together. In most cases, these two parts are an epoxy resin and a hardener. So for any epoxy product you buy, you'll get two separate components. When you combine them, they undergo a chemical reaction and a very strong bond is formed. And when I say very strong, I mean it's almost off the charts compared to other adhesives. Most epoxies are rated by their tensile strength. That is, the resistance to breaking or separating while under pressure. And a lot of epoxies that you'll find out there advertise that tensile strength on the packaging. I've read that there are epoxies that bond up to 7,000 PSI, which is just ridiculous. But many of the domestic, readily available epoxies will be in the 1,500 to 4,000 PSI range. For the vast majority of household projects, that's more than enough. The other feature that they often advertise on the package is bond time. This has complicated phases like pot life, working time, gel time, but it roughly translates into how much time it takes a newly mixed batch to set up, harden, and begin to cure. The most popular forms of household epoxies are the five minute variety. They're so common that we just kind of refer to the whole class as five minute epoxies. This stuff is extremely versatile and useful, and I think that it's your real replacement for super glue. I've talked about this before. I did a whole video on making small wood repairs on a broken chair with five minute epoxy but it didn't get watched that much and it didn't really address how epoxies are so versatile because they bond much more than just wood. These general five minute epoxies are often good on wood, plastic, metal, tile and other ceramics, even leather and types of fabric. And there are specialized products that are more engineered for specific materials like designated metal bonding epoxies, fast setting plastic epoxies and concrete epoxies. And there are a lot of companies making these things. Loctite and JB Weld control much of the home improvement market, but Gorilla Glue is another really big name in epoxies, and companies like Devcon make good products as well. In my experience, they're all really useful. They're going to cover that broad base of home repairs that everyone needs to make. And if you're doing a material-specific project, then you can just get the right epoxy to match it. But generally speaking, the application is always going to work much the same way. I'll show you real quick as I bond some totally random stuff here. To start, you'll typically have a double plunger container. These are the separate chemicals, the epoxy resin and the hardener. Sometimes one is an opaque color, other times they're both clear. Whatever the case, you usually break a cap off the nozzle to open them. Save that cap, you'll probably want it later. Then, just like a syringe, you push the plungers to force out the chemicals. Don't do this directly onto what you're fixing. You want to use a piece of throwaway plastic or cardboard. Most of the products include this in their packaging. And they'll also often include a little mixing paddle of some sort, but if it doesn't have one, you can just use a few toothpicks or a tiny piece of wood. But you swirl the chemicals together. Right away, you'll see them start to get a little bit murky, and you'll often also notice a smell. It doesn't quite stink, it's just weird. The working time for your epoxy has begun. Now, don't touch the epoxy. You probably want to wear gloves and goggles, unlike me. Use another piece of scrap to trowel it into the area you're fixing or attaching. I sometimes use paintbrush bristles taped together. I really like that approach. It lets you brush the epoxy on evenly. When you have a good layer on, you just press your pieces together and ideally supply some pressure. Sometimes I do this with finger pressure or a clamp if I can work one in. You even have some working time here to wipe the squeeze out away with a little paper towel. Temperature can affect bond time, but typically five minutes is all it takes for a five minute epoxy. I like to test this by checking my leftover epoxy in the mixing tray. If it's hard, then I know the epoxy in the repair probably is too. And about five minutes later, that's it, it's bonded. It'll take many hours for it to fully cure, so you don't want to stress it. But it's already way stronger than most other adhesives will get it. And what makes it so much more useful than most super glues is that it's thicker, like a gel. This means that it tends to stay put, which is great because it's also a gap filler. It can fill up dead space between components and make a solid bridge with that tensile strength across the gap. This function alone gives it so many applications in so many industries because most other adhesives just don't do that. And as I said, it works on many surfaces, like you see in my random junk here. Wood to wood, metal to wood, 
metal to plastic, metal to metal, epoxy locks them all together. By backing off the plunger, you can usually save much of what you have left. I like to tape the cap on and store it carefully somewhere, though you might want to wrap it in a paper towel just in case it leaks. Just remember to always follow the safety and application instructions of the product you're using and get the product that you need just by reading the packaging. There are a lot of types out there. But that's it, five minute epoxy. That's my superior alternative to super glue. What do you think? Is epoxy adhesive new to you? Or do you use it often? And if so, what for? Let me hear about it down in the comments. I'm gonna link a bunch of epoxies down below in the description. Feel free to browse those. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.